perhaps the best place to start, actually, is looking back all the way, well, not really very far, 44 days, six weeks, uh, of what's happened in the pound versus the dollar, because never really have we had a prime ministership which has been so defined by what's happened in markets for the entirety uh, of those, indeed, six weeks. And it's worth just running through it. This is the pound against the US dollar. There have been various other charts we've been looking at recently, in particular government bond rates. But this also tells you quite a lot, because the higher that is, the stronger the pound is, the lower it is, the weaker the pound is. You can see the moment that Liz Truss came in. And just look at this line as it continues through September. You had, obviously, the mini-budget, now notorious. And look at what happened to sterling after that. Weakening, 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 getting down to the lowest level that it's ever ever got to against the US dollar only a few weeks ago now, and then gradually recovering as the Bank of England intervened. And of course, later on, Kwasi Kwarteng uh, getting fired. And you can see the pound getting stronger there. And indeed, all the way up to where we are now, with Liz Truss resigning, the pound strengthened again. Not by all that much, frankly, compared with the enormous roller coaster that we've had since. But what this underlines is the extent to which, first, this has been defined by charts like this, and secondly, any future leadership contest is likely to be defined as well by what happens in markets, because we're in an extraordinary moment now with a new chancellor who can expect, potentially, that he might be able to hold on to that place, if only because people are so nervous about what's happening in financial markets. We've never seen a prime ministership quite like this one, both in terms of the policy, in terms of the length, and in terms of the concentration of what financial markets think about the UK.